Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Monday, the first day of November 2021. Hope you survived the weekend okay, the trick-or-treating and all of that. And now we are in the last month of the hurricane season. This is it. 30 days to go, 29 after today, whatever. You get the idea. We are five-sixths of the way through. That's a good fraction for you, right? It's true. There's six months of hurricane season And we have used five of them, so that leaves one-sixth, it's hard to say that, of those six months. There's one of them left, one 30-day period. And to that end, an interesting tweet here, let me go back to the original part, from Brian McNoldy down in Miami, Florida, at the University of Miami at the Rosenthal School, tweeting about how basically November is generally quiet. I like this little infographic you can see in the month of June, In South Florida, one hurricane has typically historically affected the area. When you get to July, it increases to two, as you can see there in the South Florida area. By August, it goes up to 13. September is 16, but the big winner, except for this year, is October. 23 direct or close calls, whatever you want to call it, direct impacts, I guess, from hurricanes for South Florida. Nothing this year, of course. Everything shut down completely, basically, once we got to early October. And, you know, that's a whole story for another day. We don't exactly know why that happened. But this year, no threats to Florida or anybody, for that matter, in the month of October on the Atlantic Basin side. We had Pamela and Rick, as you well know, in the Eastern Pacific. And that's it. But November, one lone event. It really drops off, doesn't it? 23 in October, one in November. So a big drop-off there kind of falls off the cliff as we get to November. So typically things are going to be really, really quiet. Now you look at this and you think, well, hey, it's kind of busy out there today. And we do have a few areas of interest in the Southwest Caribbean Sea. 10% chance of further development over the next few days. A low-pressure area sitting down there in that region trying to get going, but the overall pattern Not going to be conducive for much in the way of development, but it will bring some impacts by way of some gusty winds from time to time, heavy rain, the possibility of some flooding down there in the southern part of Central America, Panama, Costa Rica. Then, and this is remarkable, you got to admit, here we are November 1st, talking about a system in the far eastern main development region, but it's only got a 10% chance of development because upper level winds are just too strong. It's a little bit too late for something to try to get going out that way. And we don't want to discount here subtropical storm Wanda still spinning around out there. I'll show you a nice close-up of it in just a moment. First of all, there's our system in the Caribbean. It's fairly well organized, tangled up with land. And just overall, the energy of it, you know, just the the general organization, it's just not there. It's just not, it's, it's not in the cards for this to develop much further. Eastern Pacific, got a few areas of showers and thunderstorms, but it's all mostly scattered with no problems. Eastern Caribbean, western part of the main development region, nice and clear. The trade's just kind of blowing through with no real sensible weather to worry about. There, though, is 95L, well-defined skeleton, if you will, down at the surface, a well-defined low-level swirl down there. You can see it if you just look real close. I forgot to pull up a floater of it, but it's there. And if it had some deep thunderstorms around it that would persist for maybe 12 to 24 hours, it would be upgraded to a depression. But a little bit too much dry air, definitely too strong of an upper-level wind pattern. Shearing that system, it's taking those thunderstorms and moving them away from that low-level center. And so for now, it will remain an area of interest, an invest, as we call it. I don't see much of a future for this system. There's Wanda, though which developed from that powerful nor'easter that hammered this area, wandered around out over the Atlantic, and now it's sitting over here. Became the 21st named storm of the 2021 season. Here's a close-up of it, some deep convection over to its east of the circulation, which is becoming less defined overall. So I think the, uh, the age of Wanda is just about over. That'll pretty much be it for it. It's out over the open ocean uh, of interest, certainly to maritime Vessels that are out there shipping goods back and forth across the Atlantic, they will want to avoid this. But again, they have meteorological consultants and whatever. 
And they can just watch this update and they'll know all about it, right? Who knows? Maybe that's what they do. Um, but yeah, you can see not much energy in the tropics. Just a little bit more today. There's the system in the Southwest Caribbean. There's 95L. And this is certainly more than we have seen in the last couple of weeks. And then there is Wanda up here, kind of part of this overall larger uh, area of energy and vorticity, as we call it. And even the lower 48, for the most part, is kind of quieted down. A little bit of energy up here to the southeast of Hudson Bay in Canada, but a generally quiet start to the beginning of November. Now, this is interesting, as usually it is, right? When am I ever going to look at this and go, well, you know what, it's boring. Nothing's after, you know, nothing to talk about. Um, nice little loop current in the Gulf. Got the La Nina officially in the Pacific. Warm main development region, warm Western Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean, warm Atlantic overall. Just nothing to take advantage of all of that energy, tropical cyclone wise. So like I've been saying, I think as we get on towards winter, that these big mid-latitude storms that will come down uh, maybe off the Pacific, maybe get low pressure areas that develop in the northwestern Gulf, part of the overall Miller A, Miller B winter storm types, lake effect events, you name it. I th you know, if we get the subtropical jet stream involved, where you get a nice pulse of energy that rides up across out of the uh, Pacific, a subtropical jet merging with the polar jet, who knows, you might get some interesting storms along the East Coast this year, especially with all that warm water sitting offshore relative to average. Now, don't get me wrong, the water is cooling off, and it's cold in some areas. I mean, like, dangerously cold if you fell in or went swimming, but it's warmer than it should be. And that's what these reds especially show. Definitely warmer by, in some of these areas here that are almost black, we're talking three, four, five Celsius above the long-term average. And that is a lot of extra energy that is still in the Atlantic there. Even though water temperatures are cooling off, they're still warmer than they should be. So we'll see if that fuels a stronger winter storm season. Check out the loop current definitely injecting its way into the Gulf there, nice and prominent. Uh, 26 Celsius line right about here. So yes. The threat of any hurricane activity that you have to worry about at all is virtually zero from Texas all the way over to basically Tampa. Not all the way to zero because you never know. You never ever do absolutes with the weather unless it's happening. It is raining. There is a hurricane. There is a blizzard. Those are your 100%, right? Everything else is still probability. But those cooler sea surface temperatures, especially the shelf waters, uh, that's good news. That's good to see after everything everybody's been through with all kinds of stuff these last couple of years. We don't have to worry about hurricanes. I'm 99% sure from this point forward. But the winter storms, that could be different mainly for this area up here of the Northeast and New England as we progress through the next several weeks and a couple of months or so. The water temperatures here too. And this is what I was saying. Look, 14 Celsius, right? Um, this is 26 Celsius through here, so the Gulf Stream still nice and toasty if you went out there and jumped off of your boat. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice, but up against the coastline of Maryland, Jersey, Delaware, up to Long Island, New England, and the uh, Gulf of Maine, cold in my opinion, but like I showed you on the anomalies map, which is not that, not that, it's that one. They are warmer than average, those sea surface temperatures. It's just interesting. You see that and you go, ooh, must be toasty. Well, not quite. It's warmer than average, but I'm going to venture to guess that, I don't know, 13, 14, 15, 16 Celsius. We're talking cold, in my opinion, but still warm enough for some potent storms. Hey, check that out. In the lower 48 weather, kind of sliding into that realm real quick. Um, nothing to speak of on the map. That's a nice quiet. It's almost like, all right, I'm done. See you next time. See you in a week or whatever. I've got a couple more things to talk about, but uh, that is a nice quiet weather map to start the month of November. Just a little bit of activity. Let's just click on it, shall we? Let's just see what it is in Colorado. It is a winter weather advisory up in the Rockies. I guess an impulse is going through there, and so it's the really high part of the Rockies there. You don't have to worry about it in Denver 
or down towards Castle Rock or points east from there out into the open part of the Front Range. But the high Rockies there, the higher elevations, a little bit of activity to you know at least keep an eye on if you're traveling out that way. And we go back to the main um, weather map. I know what this is. This is a freeze watch. And it will just broaden it back out again. So yes, the first freeze of the season potentially coming up for a portion of the Pennsylvania, New Jersey area down into the Appalachians, right? And, you know, it's getting colder. It's November. It's expected. It's just a little later. Getting later and later each year, it seems. So, anything to worry about going forward? I talked about how I think the season is pretty much done down here along the southeast and Gulf Coast areas. So let's see if the next two weeks or so um, sort of prove that, if you will, in the models anyway. This is the GFS operational. 12Z from today, there's the disturbance in the Southwest Caribbean. There is Wanda. There's 95L, and that is it. We'll move this out into time, and we will. We'll just look out two weeks. Why not? And I'll just scroll this through. You see the impulses in the Caribbean. You know what? Maybe, 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 maybe that one becomes a very small, short-lived tropical cyclone over the next few days. Small, very, very small, like tiny, almost like the size of Lake Okeechobee itself. Uh, hey, that can happen. We've seen some tiny ones in the Bay of Campeche. Wasn't it Tomas in 2010 that was really small geographically? And in fact, the GFS develops a few of these areas of vorticity to some extent. So we'll see. This is about almost five days out. We'll continue the progression through time. Um, high pressure builds back over the Gulf and the southeastern states. So a lot of the storminess is going to go over the top of that in the northern latitudes. And nothing down in the deep tropics, of course. It's pretty much done until next year. But we keep sliding on into the future and just see what happens. And this is way out in time, so don't take this at all as gospel, as they say. But it just gives you an idea of the overall pattern that maybe we get a huge, that's a big old, oh man, that's a giant cutoff low and general troughiness over the east towards November 15th. We'll see. There could just as well be a big fat ridge there by that time. You know how that works. You know whether or not it's a hurricane that you're looking at way out in time and people post 10, 12, 15 day maps. Well, the same is true for even the larger weather features like that giant upper level low and whatever. We'll see. That's a long ways out. I will show you this. The temperatures over the next, um, let's just go out to a week, are going to be basically below normal across the eastern United States. This is 48 hours out. Wednesday morning, the Rockies and west above average, east of there below average, 72 hours, kind of the same thing. And then look at that, even southern Canada, all the way up the, the Rockies and vicinity, warmer as the, sh uh, the brunt of the cold shifts east over time. That's six days right there. There's day seven. Now you start to warm things up again with more ridging coming in, troughing out west, and the leftovers of that cooler weather over the southeast. So maybe more areas seeing their first frost coming up. Keep an eye on that if you're interested in growing stuff. You know, your growing season is limited once we get to this time of year. But no major storms seen on the horizon. You're looking out there, looking for them. Nothing right now that I can see, certainly nothing in the tropics. And that's what we're going to do is gradually shift towards more analytical looks at the tropics like, okay, what's the ENSO doing? The El Nino Southern Oscillation, sea surface temperatures, outlooks for next year, stuff to kind of keep us occupied and engaged. It's just like when a major sports, you know, baseball, football, whatever comes to an end and people still talk about it in the off season because that's just what they do. We, we always have to stay occupied, I guess. But we'll use our talent and our time here each day, not every day in the off season, at least once a week, to talk about lower 48 weather. Big ticket storms, blizzards, lake effect snows, severe weather when the time comes, and sometimes all at once. You never know. You get some of those big doozies of storm systems that creates everything for just about everybody, at least in a particular region. So that's what we will gradually be moving towards. And then this logo, I was talking about it earlier, that Tim put together from us, will switch to our off-season logo all under the Hurricane Track brand 
as we shift towards winter and severe weather for next year, and then eventually hurricane season again. So continue to follow. Don't leave. No reason to go anywhere. We always have something interesting to talk about, and I'm still working on productions behind the scenes. Hurricane Highway Season 2. I've got four episodes done. Our patrons have access to that right now. As soon as I get the fifth one ready, I'll put the first four out there and then gradually get the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth done or whatever from season two. It's hard. I put I do the whole thing myself. Edit it on this very laptop that I'm recording this video on. I do the music myself on some synthesizers that are off to my right. I produce it. I shoot all the talking head pieces. Not bragging here. I'm just telling you. It's a production that takes time. And if you know my work, I like it to be exactly the way I want it, at least to the best of my ability. So we're working on stuff. We are. So don't go anywhere. All right? It's not Hurricane season might be waning, but that doesn't mean we turn off the lights and we'll see you again next June. Far from it. So that being said, yes, we're on Twitter, at Hurricane Track, on the Meta Universe or Facebook or, you know, Thanos or whatever. <laughs> I joke about it because what the heck, right? Sometimes you just got to scratch your head. Um, and then YouTube. At least YouTube is still YouTube. And I think it's gotten better over the years, despite some of the negatives, I know. But at least they're keeping their name, right? And we're on Patreon, which is an awesome thing to crowdfund the future of what we're doing. We'd love to have you get involved. And that being said, one more thing before I let you go. On the 29th of October, I recorded a Zoom session that I had with a few of our supporters. We all got together Friday night competing with the Braves-Astros game. I realized that. But we had a, a good group of people that tuned in. And I talked about what we did this year and a look ahead to next year with a few big projects in the works. And I'm going to make that Zoom meeting. I recorded it, of course. And I'm going to make it publicly available later today or tonight. So you'll be able to see that yourself and get a peek at what we're working on behind the scenes and exactly you know who some of our patrons are. Talk about them. There's 900 and something of them. They're very real people, and they have enabled me to do a lot. And we want to try to continue to grow that. So we talked about that and more on our meeting last Friday. I'll publish that for you and make it publicly available. And uh, you'll see what we're working on as we get ready for next year and continue to take this up and up and up. And there's no limit. We can do whatever we want. It's totally up to you guys. And I think that is amazing. It really, really is. And I thank you. All right. And speaking of thanking you, thanks for tuning in to this. I do appreciate your time and attention for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion here. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, and the Hurricane Track brand. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.